So I decided to do a video. It's kind of a story and it's also another kind of movie pop culture thing. It is a movie that I loved when I was a kid and I still love it and I've turned so many people onto this movie. Be surprised how many people haven't seen this movie. But if you're watching me and you're in the 80s, you've probably seen it. It's called The Lost Boys. And um, when I was a kid, my aunt was kind of strict. And she wouldn't let me watch a lot of R-rated movies, especially scary movies because I have nightmares. I'm sorry about that. Um, I saw The Shining on TV when I was a kid and it scared the hell out of me because I hadn't been exposed to many things. Like a lot of kids now are exposed to a lot of scary stuff. I had a friend and she had a slumber party and I stayed the night over there. And we watched a movie called Alice Sweet Alice. And if anybody's seen that, they know that is a gory movie. And it's scary too. I watched it a few years ago with a friend of mine. He'd never seen it. And even he said that movie creeped him out and but that's another video for another day but so I wasn't allowed to watch a lot of scary movies and when I was a kid I loved the Corys. I loved Corey Ham, I loved Corey Feldman. I loved them so much that I had a cat named Corey and of course nobody called the cat Corey or none of my family did. I was the only one that did because they thought it was a stupid name for a cat but um, out of the movies that like Corey Ham and Corey Feldman did um, the only two I thought were worth even watching were Lost Boys and License to Drive. And License Drive, another one, but I'll maybe talk about that some other time. Um, but we went to the video store, and I would beg every time we would go to see The Lost Boys. And a friend of mine had got to see it well before I did. And she told me, she said, she didn't think it was scary. The only part that bothered her was the part where the one vampire pulls the top of the guy's scalp off. And that is probably the grossest part of the movie. And one of the vampires starts biting into his head. Because even the part where um, Edgar stabs Marco, it looked more slimy than it did bloody, really. When you watched it, it looks more like he's covered in glittery slime or something. But So I wasn't allowed to watch it. And then finally, she got so sick and tired of me asking. I would have probably been eight or nine, I guess, when we got to see it because it came out in 87. And she was like, fine, I'll rent it for you. But if you have nightmares, don't come crying to me. And of course, anybody that's seen The Lost Boys knows it's not really scary. In fact, I think it's funnier than it is scary. And so, of course, I loved it. And then I had to show my dad because he worked a lot. And um, when he was home, I showed him he liked it, too. And so then me and my friends in the neighborhood at the time, most of my friends were girls when I was a kid. And we would play Lost Boys, but not like where we were the Lost Boys. We would play where um, we were their girlfriends. And I always got stuck with Corey Feldman. <laughs> I never got like the really cute guys because looking back on it, Corey Feldman really wasn't that cute. He was kind of cute in License to Drive, but in his other movies, not so much. And I actually, at the time, I liked Corey Feldman more than I liked Corey Haim, I think. And I think it's just because Corey Feldman was in Stand By Me. And I thought he was he was good in that. And I thought that was a good movie. I thought that movie was better than most of Corey Haim's movies that he did without Corey Feldman. Um, Lucas was okay, but really, I didn't really watch most of the movies he did by himself. I was really like Feldman's movies more. I liked Goonies, and, and of course I liked the movies they did together. But um, but so yeah, so we would play Lost Boys, and um, if anybody hasn't seen it, and I'm assuming most people have, but yet, who knows? I've turned recently a couple people within the last two years onto this movie that had never seen, it, and they both liked it. It's not really scary, but it's about this woman, and she's uh, separated from her husband, and she takes her two sons to Santa Carla to live with her father, and her father's really funny. I like the grandpa's one of the better characters in the movie, actually, and so they move there, and the older brother gets hooked up with a vampire gang because he tries to date one of, well, she's a vampire, but you never really see her be a vampire, except there was a part where she flies up to the window. But the soundtrack of that movie is really, really good, too. That's what made me think about talking about it, because I was on um, YouTube at work. And when I work at night, I listen to my headphones, and Cry Little Sister came on. And I was like, oh, yeah, I should talk about The Lost Boys. And a friend of mine, he met Corey Feldman at some convention, said he was a complete douchebag. He said he had a room next to him, and he said, my friend said he tried to be polite to him and friendly, and he just... Psh, didn't want want to talk to him, so I don't know. It was kind of disappointing to hear that. So maybe Corey Haim was the better of the two. I don't know. They did a show that came out like in 2009 called The Two Corys. And I watched it, and the first season was kind of lighthearted. And then it got kind of dark because Corey Haim had lots of drug problems. And Corey Feldman did too, but he got cleaned up. And he married some girl that was like a fan of his. And, of course, that didn't work out. And she was really unlikable on the show anyway. Um, 
she just seemed kind of what fakey and I don't know. She's always kind of rude to Corey Haim, but I guess uh, maybe, I don't know, if Corey Haim came in and disrupt, disrupted your household, you might be annoyed with him too. But so anyway, The Lost Boys, a really good movie. It's got a lot of really good actors in it, and it's a good vampire movie. It's not like um, the vampire movies, like these stupid Twilight movies. It's actually, um, it's like how vampire movies are supposed to be. It has a good soundtrack and a bunch of good looking guys. You could tell the director was gay because he put all these fine looking guys in there as vampires. Like, really, the only vampire in there that did not look good was Bill from Bill and Ted's... Yeah, he was Bill. Bill and Ted, from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Um, Alex Winter, he was the only guy in there that I didn't think was cute. But the rest of the guys, mm -hmm. And it's a good soundtrack. It's just a fun movie. So, um, out of the Corey movies, it's probably my favorite one. With License to Drive, is a very, very close second. So, um, if you haven't seen it, check it out. And thank you so much for watching me. Please like and subscribe.